Welcome, friend. I like to spend my spare time taking a dive back into the nostalgic territory of childhood. And for me, that means Pokemon. However, I don't feel like I get enough of that. Now, as my passion for Pokemon collides with my profession as an animator, that magic in the middle is where I make something for you to enjoy. In this latest project, I'm recreating Lugia's signature move, Aeroblast. Now, the only real difference between creating and drawing in school and animating is that animating requires drawing in four dimensions. The first three you'll be familiar with, the X, Y, and Z axis. The fourth dimension for animation is time. To get started though, I need a model of Lugia to animate, and rather than making one from scratch, the mod community is kind enough to offer this one from X and Y for free. After pasting it like a sticker onto the page and making a few adjustments that I'm not going over because it would take too long and I don't want to, I can start the first stage of animation called blocking. This entails making several different poses for Lugia to be in throughout the timeline of the animation without worrying about what happens in between, kind of like making a rough sketch. To round off blocking, I want to be sure where Lugia is makes sense chronologically. The poses should tell a story. Moving on from its idle animation, it should move backwards to draw in that energy, like a dragon taking a deep breath in before breathing out fire. After this breath in, Lugia needs to compress all that energy and then throw it forward in a final blast. Now that Lugia is in the places I want it to be in, I can start manipulating the biggest bones that control the main body's movements. After the main body is done, we can move from the body up towards the neck and head, working out any kinks until they feel smooth. Any uncurvy curves at this stage in the main body will cause many problems down the line and end up making things look jerky, so I'll be taking my time on this one. Once that looks nice and curvy, I can start with the parts that need to look the best. And in this case, it's the wings and the tails you really want. There's a lot of pressure on this part, especially since Lugia's wing hands are so iconic, just going back and forth between them until I like the look of what I see. Now, this pose is where Lugia first pulls back, and it needs to be held for long enough to clearly show off the pose and give Lugia plenty of time to gather the energy for a proper blast. With the wings and tail animation roughly carved out, we can move on to our Freebird's flat feet. The takeoff from the ground is super important to emphasize the weight Lugia moves to, well, move. With all that basic stuff out of the way, we can finally start pulling together the different bits and pieces and smoothing over the edges of the animation so that it looks nice and crispy. With a nice grind and the wings looking smooth, I can start adding the smaller details of each of Lugia's fingers. Then, so on until I'm happy with how it looks by itself. And then, it's time to move on to the special effects. First thing to do for implementing special effects is to envision where and what effects we want, using the movie, Gale of Darkness, and the Gen 2 animations as our reference, since those are my favorite. Once I have the general idea of what wind goes where, I can whip up some quick gusts using nodes and basic shapes, along with adding a ball to attach the gusts to that sort of strings them along. Since the intake pose will be the longest held, it needs the effects to look good and complement it, rather than hiding it. With the first pose set and the basic effects planted, I can move on to the actual beam that Lugia will fire. I tried a few different shapes, ideas, expanding and shaping the original ball, but nothing looked right. I spent literal hours on this, trying to get something that looked right. Try, fail, try, fail, try, fail, rinse and repeat. Took a three hour break, slight siesta, might have also had a bit of ice cream in there for some pity food. Until I looked down at my desk, and there, sitting on a Hylian shield, was the Triforce. A triangle! Thus, since it has the narrowest point, and can be expanded infinitely to reach any distance, it'll work perfectly for the wide blast shape that also narrows without the smallest point moving. After that, it was a simple matter of cleaning up and animating the placement of each of these effects, not forgetting to add the hero of our show, subs. Once the effects have been added, I noticed the impact still lacked the oomph factor. A few more gusts of wind and particle flashes to break it up and look like a meaty chunkier hit. With the animation and effects in place, it was finally time to pick a venue. First I thought that recreating that battle sim entry effect from Gale of Darkness would be perfect, but then I realized that was going to be way too much work and didn't end up looking that great anyways, so I moved on to option number two, Phoenix Stadium. With everything finally in place and done, it was a simple matter of editing sounds from Gale of Darkness's original animations, along with using the appropriate battle music to fit the nostalgic vibe we were going for, and it's on to the final render release of my work for Lugia's Aeroblast. Complete. 
If you'd like to personally check out the file for Aeroblast that is available for download on my Patreon, and speaking of those, thank you to my newest patrons, Christopher, Bonapai, and White. Thank you all, and if you liked what you see, it would be very kind of you to hit the like and subscribe buttons to let me know to make more like this. Farewell.